Is it worth buying a 3D scanner to make your own car parts? So this is an e-brake handle from our BMW E30 build. And as you could see, it's a little bit ragged. So we figured why not scan this simple part, see how it goes before we jump into more complex parts and slightly bigger parts. We chose the budget-friendly Ferret Pro, which includes a wireless bridge meaning that you can scan parts without being hardwired. The wireless bridge attaches to the battery along with a phone holder. The scanner snaps onto the top of the bridge. Then a USB cable goes from the scanner to the bridge and from the bridge to the battery system. We placed our part on a flat surface and downloaded the Creality Scan app on our iPad, connected to the wireless bridge named Ferret. Then you can use the basic settings and select the rough size of the object. The next screen will give you the ability to practice positioning, then hit start. The app will tell you if you're properly tracking the device by highlighting in green for good or red for bad. All right, this isn't as easy as everybody else makes it look, but let's try a few different settings and see what happens. We canceled the scan and selected geometry instead of texture. The settings helped a little, but we were still struggling. However, there's one more setting we can try, and that's using these markers, which keep track of positioning. So we're adding a few markers to our surface along with the turntable. Then we placed the part in the center of the turntable and started scanning while rotating the turntable. The markers made a huge difference. We were able to get full green scan and we used the export function to transfer the project to our computer because we didn't have enough resources on our iPad. So the first scan really wasn't that great, but let's take a look at the second scan with the markers. Here you can see all the cloud points of the scan and you can use the lasso tool to select unwanted cloud points and just delete them. However, you can select the entire object then do an inverse and delete everything around it. Then you can optimize the cloud points just to clean things up a bit. And then once we perform the optimization, we're now going to select mesh and we're going to, again, use the max settings here and close up any holes. <laughs> so the hole mesh filler left this ugly blob, but we can select it with square tool and delete it. You can go to edit and go to the hole filling and then just select to add a filler for this hole. And then we can confirm that. And now the file is ready to be exported to an STL file which we can use in our 3D printing software. Now we just import that file into our 3D printing software, just align it a little bit. We wanna get rid of that bump. So we're gonna bring the 3D file down a bit to make a nice clean surface. And there you go, it's looking pretty good. Now we're ready to print. And if you're enjoying the content, like, subscribe, and let us know what other car parts you like to see a scanner print. Check out the results. Wow. Look how awesome that came out. Here's the original. Here's the 3D printed version. And it looks fantastic. You can see that a lot of the markings that were on the scanned one were cleaned up on this one. So this one has a hollow center and this one doesn't. So in some cases, you will have to use Mesh Mixer or Sharper 3D in order to modify your files and make adjustments to them before you print them. The real question is, how is it going to do with even larger parts? For this part, we're going to be using a black foam underlay with markers for the larger BMW toolkit. The scan was going pretty well, and we didn't even have to use the marker settings for this part but for some reason, the export just kept failing. After some research, we found out that iPads are not supported, so we switched over to our iPhone, but for whatever reason, we couldn't even get that working. Okay, well, my iPhone won't connect. It's an iPhone 14 Pro. It shows that it's supported on the website, but I just can't get it to see the scanner, and I've uninstalled the app, reinstalled the app, made sure everything was updated, and it's just not working, which is unfortunate. But let's not stop. I'm gonna try to connect this guy directly to my laptop just right across here. Okay, so good news. I was able to get my laptop to connect directly to the bridge. 
So now I'm going to detach my phone and load this up full screen so I can see across the room and give it a try. The wireless scanning to our laptop is actually working pretty well. Reality scan on a MacBook just has a cleaner interface. Once done, we deleted all the parts just like we did on the e-brake handle. Here's what the mesh looks like. Next, we just export the STL into Cura. And here you can see that our printer is a bit too small. So for this prototype, we're just gonna shrink it down. Then we're gonna give it a good slice. Then we can check the layers, give it a good print test with some PETG filament. So for this being a miniature version, I'm super impressed. Check this out. I mean, look at the detail. It looks great. If I had miniature tools, I would literally be able to put them in here. That's how well the scan came out compared to this guy. And take a look at the back. The back even came out, in my opinion, even better than the back of the original. But let us know what you think in the comments. So I do have mixed feelings about this budget 3D scanner for the sole fact that my iPhone won't even find the scanner when it connects. And the iPad is just hit or miss, which is really unfortunate because I do want to scan one more part, but I think I might have a solution. Now, luckily we have Ashley who is an Android lover. So we're going to see if we can get her phone to connect to the scanner and do some scans for us. So new scan. You got to turn on the scanner first. <laughs> details, details. Your, your screen is upside down. I see that. <laughs> Uh-oh. What happened? Sir, what, sir. I think Ashley's having the same problem where you could lose tracking. So I think let's put the markers on the car and then see if we can hold the track. Now keep in mind that if this was on an iPhone, it wouldn't even do it. So there. And then as you can see, it popped up right here, but without markers, with markers. So way, way more detailed, but still both of them impressive. And you wouldn't know that if you had an iPhone, only Android. So just saying. <laughs> you wanna scan some more? I wanna scan everything. There's your room. So what do you think with the Android, Ashley? It's pretty cool. Um, I would definitely recommend using the markers for everything, but if you can't, you can do it. You just have to have a little bit more patience and you have to be a superior Android user. <laughs> but the real test is gonna be, can we take the files, export them from her phone into our Apple device and see if we can process the files. So let's give the import a try, fingers crossed. First one's going around 40%. Well, let's see, come on, come on. The import made it successfully into Creality Scan, and we're gonna start by deleting all the unwanted elements. Here you can see we picked up scans from the back. We'll delete those too. Once it's done, we're gonna optimize our settings, and then we're gonna create our mesh. So once that's completed, what we're really interested in is this center section and we can actually overlay an image to see exactly the look and size of it. File number one, 
worked. One down, two more to go. On the second scan, we captured the air dam section. We plan to make a new cover for it, and here you can see the image overlay as well. Now we have one more to go. We also scanned the bottle cap rim just for fun. Some of the detail is missing, but if we scan it for a bit longer, I'm sure we could pick up some of the missing parts. And who knows, maybe we'll make some custom aero discs. So you're not gonna just print out these particular scans. What we're gonna do is we're actually going to export these scans into a 3D modeling software. And that's gonna allow us to create our own customized parts that'll fit exactly to all the different pieces that we scanned. Now, if you're interested in more of that type of content, let us know in the comments below. But if you'd like to learn more about how to 3D print, watch this next video here.